Welcome to the Dawi Expert Series podcast. Today, I am very pleased to have Nathan Bryan as our guest. Uh, Nathan Bryan is a well-known teacher of internal alchemy in Canada, who is a major disciple of uh, Master Wang Liping, uh, or Grandmaster Wang Liping. And uh, he is going to talk to us today about his system, his background in internal alchemy and the Taoist arts. Um, and uh, we're going to find out what he's offering to the community. So welcome, Nathan. Hey, good to be here, Robbie. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. Thanks for putting these talks together. I, I think it's a great idea what you guys are doing. Yeah. And, you know, just for... Um, purposes of uh, transparency. This is not our first time to have this interview, but unfortunately, I managed to lose the other one. So I think the good thing that this can bring to the viewers is that we're going to have a uh, more, even more mature and uh, and more informed interview this time around. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or it'll descend into chaos. Um, so, hey, tell me about, tell us about um, your, your history of training internal alchemy, this is a very interesting genre of practice, and you have a, a very cool and interesting backstory. So I, I'm sure everybody would love to hear about that first. Um, yeah, sure. So I started in, in 97. Um, in, uh, I, was, I was on the bus going through uh, Chinatown, and uh, I saw, you know, a sign on the on, on the walls of a building that had the uh, the old Tai Chi tool, you know, the nice Tai Chi symbol, and then it was um, Taoist uh, stuff. And I uh, was like, I had this like rush of shivers up my spine, like, what is that? That looks cool. Got off the bus, walked in, and checked it out, and and kind of never looked back. Um, and uh, I th those first teachers I had were were from a, a Taoist lineage from the south, uh, from out of Hong Kong, Guangdong area um, and I, I trained with them for about three years um, and they kind of put me on the path of the Taoist path in terms of not just um, energy or internal arts but sort of thinking of it within a within the context the framework of Taoist cultivation what that was um, and uh, and it's something I've carried with me for it's like a compass I, I carry with me for for the last few decades, um, got really into it. Just loved it. I was I was what, 20, 21 at that time, and uh, you know, did was doing luhabafa, tai chi, meditation, temple arts, chanting, um, just whatever I could. Just sort of fell in love with it, uh, and then at some point realized, hey, um, I want to I want to I want to go to China. <laughs> I want to I want to see what's going on over there, and went there and. Uh, hung out with some of the uh, traditional Chen family Tai Chi people in Beijing. Uh, so I was with Feng Zhiqiang, went to his school for six months full time. Uh, and then through um, through his school, met uh, Chen Yu, who is a uh, son of Chen Zhao Kui, um, Chen, Chen Fa Ke's grandson. They're, you know, Chen family luminaries. Um, and, you know, uh, Feng Zhiqiang was great. Uh, he's a uh, fantastic uh, Tai Chi guy and Qigong guy uh, and just it was incredible incredible practitioner um, and then you know it was just like full time it was fun you know I was, I was in I was in Beijing and um, it was cheap at that time to live so I just had this dingy little apartment and just live cheaply um, and so I I was able to just just train I went to the park you know for hours every morning and uh, it was fun I was living the life you know I was washing my hands by clothes well, I was washing my clothes by hand <laughs> sorry uh because we you know such a such a like a rundown apartment um but it was fun you know it was, it was it was it was fun and then I started with Chen Yu we did like three years pretty pretty full-time with him that was you know seven days a week went to his place and just trained and it was it was incredible uh and then yeah, and then went to Taiwan for a bit. Uh, did some did some some other stuff there, meditation, even some Tibetan Buddhism. But kind of never lost sight of of the, my original interest in the Tao's cultivation. Um, and early on, I'd read this book about internal alchemy, and I was like, "Wow, I want to learn that. <laughs> That's what I want." And um, you know, I remember the teachers at the time said, "Well." you know, you need a foundation. If you really want to want to do well with internal alchemy, you need a foundation to work, work the body and mind. Um, and uh, internal martial arts seemed like the vehicle to do that for me. 
So I just kept working, working that, doing some basic sitting meditation um, that I'd learned and just kind of kept going um, until, uh, yeah, and then until, let's see, when, when did it happen? That's right. So after Taiwan, I uh, had a visa problem. They're like, no more visas for you. Um, and like, okay. And I'd, oh, I'd assumed that I would just live the rest of my life in China. I loved it there. I mean, that was just where I was. That was my, that was my home. Um, and, uh, and so I was all of a sudden I found myself back in Vancouver and, uh, wondering what to do with my life. Um, you know, I was 30 and, uh, I decided to, um, to go, to go to university, go to Asian studies department here at UBC, University of British Columbia has this massive Asian studies department. And, um, my Mandarin was at a certain level and I kind of wanted to just, um, supplement that. Like, see, it's like, take that skill. That was kind of the skill I'd acquired, uh, my Tai Chi still sucked. Um, but, um, so I wasn't in a position where I wanted to like start teaching or anything like that. Um, I, uh, so I really went with the Mandarin and joined the Asian studies department, um, to get the cultural background and start, start, you know, learning about history and literature, uh, Chinese thought, all that kind of stuff. And the more I studied there, the more I, I just came right back to Taoism. Taoism was always just, I just loved it. It's just really, it's, it's, as a tradition, it just really clicked with me in a way that um, some of the other traditions, though I respect, and, and there's lots of good stuff there, just didn't click the same way. Um, and, and so I worked with um, Paul Crow, who's, a, who's an academic um, here in Vancouver at the University of Simon Fraser. Um, and so I would go from my university to his just for classes and seminars. We do, uh, um, you know, reading seminars, translation seminars, translating Taoist texts, that sort of thing. Um, did five years of classical Chinese um, at UBC, uh, which was really helpful um, and had a lot of fun. And, 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 and we were doing a, a reading course with, with Paul. So it's, uh, you know, he, he, so every week we have new you have to read a bunch of books and then we talk about it and, you know, it's university life, think, think, think. Um, and the last week was internal alchemy, modern day internal alchemy. And so we looked at various teachers and, and what they're doing. And it was, you know, I remember it to this day, I was walking, um, I was walking along, the, I was walking with my girlfriend at the time, now, now my wife, I was walking along the river uh, and, and the moon came out and I was like had I'd been reading, you know, I had all this stuff in my head and I just, this thought came to me. It's like, look, you want to learn internal alchemy for a long time, but you haven't. Why there are people teaching it now? Why aren't you going and learning it? And at the time I just sort of had this, this perception that, you know, well, um, either my foundation is not good enough. So I, I still need to, you know, work harder at my foundation or there's no good stuff left. All the real stuff has disappeared and it was sort of this kind of voice in my head and I was like well you don't know if it's there or not or if you're suited for it or not unless you go and try so I was like okay so I went <laughs> and went back to the went back to home you know consulted the great oracle of google and said you know internal alchemy who, who's running retreats or trainings you know this year um and uh, I got a list of names and then I just and Wang Liping was on that list and uh, that's how I started with him. Yeah. And um, it was, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty intense. That first retreat I did with, uh, with Master Wong. Um, oh, you don't need to call him Grandmaster, by the way. He's, he's good with teacher, teacher Wong or Wong Lao Shirt. That's what I was called. Um, and at first, the first retreat with him, um, I, and I, done a fair bit of in uh, of, of practice like you know I was in China we were doing you know, five six hour days and really working stuff um, but that first retreat was just it was so intense it was so hard first of all it's just so challenging and at that time online there was no information about what he actually taught at his seminars or I, I had no idea I was going in blind um, and it was a 10-day um, kind of just immersive experience and uh and I just kind of threw myself in and, and it was, um, yeah, it was internal alchemy along with some, some other um, supplemental stuff that works with his system of internal alchemy. Uh, and it was, it was just intense. Um, the energy generated, the experience, um, you sit for, first of all, you're, you're sitting for long periods of time and cross-legged 
meditation to build up the requisite energetic pressure within the the the, the, the torso um and it hurts <laughs> and the advice is just lean into it right just lean into that 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 discomfort and pain um and so you do and it was uh it was pretty intense and you come up behind me and kind of be again opening different channels my back and whatnot releasing um energy uh um, i'm okay with the e-word by the way uh, i know some people don't don't like it yeah okay <laughs> chi whatever you want to call it whatever that experience is he did something um and 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 then there's this there's kind of uh there's an emotional release that goes along with it as well. So it's releasing things on all these different levels. Um, and it, so it's just, it's exhausting that, that first training, but I was hooked. I was like, wow, this is, this is really fun stuff. And so I just, I dropped out. Of, I was in grad school at that point. I dropped out of grad school and just went, look, I just want to, I just want to train with him. I you know for a while there I was thinking I can like kind of do a PhD dissertation, you know, kind of doing an anthro, um, uh, kind of anthro approach, you know, by going into the field and, and studying it as a, you know, kind of a social thing, you know, and try to try to figure out a way of doing internal alchemy, like full time and get it, get my, continue my education. But at some point I'm just like, no, I just, I got to do this, quit the school. Um, and I uh, just never really looked back. Um, and so I was fortunate at that point that I could, I could do it. I could, I could support myself and do it full time. Uh, so I just kind of dropped off the map for about three years, three, four years with him until my, my son was born uh, and just really went for it. I still practice to, to this day. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's how I got here, you know, and, and uh, along the way, Master Wong kind of, you know, he said, hey, uh, write some books. Uh, and so I've done that as well. So I got a, a book series about what he does, the, the Taoist Alchemy of Wang Li Ping. And trying to and, and endeavoring to um, write in my own words, sort of what his practice is about, while at the same time keeping it grounded in the tradition. Uh, and so it's a real balance, as as you know, Robbie, um, translation, right? And and so working translation into my uh, into the books, but also using my own words to from my own experience. Um, because experience is so important. It's so important to ground this stuff in actual experience, not just the thinking about things, which we were talking about earlier, Robbie. Uh, um, yeah, so I got, you know, the book series and I started teaching as well, started running seminars, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, and whatnot. He told me to start teaching. I was like, what? I still have so much to learn. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a master. Uh, I'm still very much on the path. Um, pra I gotta practice every day and and but he he supported me. He's like, no, keep, you teach. Just keep it keep it simple, based on what you know. Um, and so yeah, now now I do an, an online course since um, you know since the, since COVID. But yeah, so yeah, that's how I that's how I got here. That's marvelous. Um, I'm going to just take a second because yeah. my cat has gotten locked upstairs and she is trying to destroy the door. So we're going to edit this part out, and then I'll count us. I'll count us back in in a minute. My, yeah, my apologies. Be right yeah. back. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that. Hey, there he is. It, what it, you know, there's a door that, that we tried to keep the cat out of the upstairs room by yeah. creating this door, but she figured out how to get uh into the upstairs room, but she hasn't figured out how to get out yet. Right. Oh. She goes to the door and smashes yeah, it. Right. Until yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to count us back in. Uh, I'm going to give us a 10 second count and then uh, the guys will know where to where to cut the video. 
Okay. Yeah, cool. So uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 3, 2, 1. That's awesome. I love your background story. It's it's really cool. And uh, every superhero has a has a great background story. Um, I'd like to ask, uh, actually, well, I'd like to mention something based on the background story. So guys, you heard it here that the minute that Nathan saw his first Taoism school, he got a shiver that went up his spine, which means that his doom meridian started to open at the very first time he saw a Taoist school. It was meant to be. And it's called Yuanfen. It means destiny. So uh, I see in the background that there is a painting of a great sage. Can you tell us, it's uh, Lu Dongbian behind you. Can you tell us about who it is in your background? And I, I do believe that there is some connection, right, between um, between Master Wang's uh, teachings and, and Lu Dongbin's teachings. Is that is that right? Yeah. So our lineage comes, he's one of the patriarchs of our of our lineage. So the lineage is the Longmen Pai, the uh, Dragon Gate lineage. Um, there are, just a word of note, there are many <laughs> Dragon Gate lineages, as you know, Robbie, in China and abroad. It's a very, uh, there's many different branches, if branches is the right word for it, but there's many different ones. And that's because of sort of so, certain uh, political historical factors that happened long ago and aren't really that pertinent to this discussion. So, uh, but regardless, my, my teacher is the, is uh, Zhang Manren. He's the um, successor of, of this Dragon Gate lineage uh, that comes from, so associated with Lao Shan in uh, Shandong province. So it's a mount, it's a Taoist mountain in Shandong province. Um, and he, um, he, he was born in what, 49. So liberation. Uh, Chinese, Chinese call when the, when the communists um, came to power within China, um, and he was born at that time, um, and then he became, he was sought out by um, um, three teachers that all worked together, so these three guys worked together, and they were all, one was a, a shri, sh the, the kind of a, a grandmaster, I guess, I, I didn't really like that word grandmaster, but um, he's like the He's he's the he's older generation, right? And then he had two two main disciples, uh, and these three guys together came and found um, they need they want a successor for for their lineage. Um, and I'll get back to this guy in a moment. Uh, and so they toured around China um, and found uh, found Master Wang. They had their ways of of searching. They had certain ways that they used to to, to find. Uh, and he was in the northeastern China. Uh, he was, I think, um, 10, 11, 12. He was 12 at the time. And so they approached. And at that point, it's I guess it's the fifth, yeah, 50s, just early 60s in China. And these three da old Taoists, um, they're, they, they just pretended they were doctors, um, which made sense because they had a lot of medical training. Two of them had been imperial physicians uh, for the Qing court. Uh, and, uh, so they, they would just kind of travel through the countryside they, and cities, help people, um, heal people, that sort of thing, give, you know, free medicine, um, while they were looking for this guy. And, uh, and so they, when they found him, they, they kind of said to the parents said, Hey, um, we think your, your son has potential to be our, um, to, to learn from us. Um, uh, at the beginning, I think they just said they were old doctors, you know? Uh, and then later on, they said, yeah, actually, we, we can teach them some other stuff, too. Um, and uh, and so they were very open to it. They really liked these three. They, they thought the three guys were, were pretty good. They're good, good guys. Uh, and so he, he started training with them pretty much full time. He went to bit of school uh, in the early 60s. But then the, when the Cultural Revolution uh, took, um, got picked up steam, he uh, he took off with his three teachers, um, and they just hit the the back roads and and uh, mountain villages and and just trained. They just walked around, trained. They walked all over China, meeting various Taoists. You know, the, the cloud wandering. It's kind of a, a Taoist thing. Go and meet, go to other temples and and hermits and and whatnot. Um, and uh, and then at some point, you know, as um, at some point. They decided, they asked him if he wanted to be the successor. Um, and he said, yes. So then his training got kind of pumped up a notch. Um, and then, so the, the lineage that came down to him 
is the Loman Pi. It's a Loman Pi lineage. Um, and this fellow here is one of the patriarchs, uh, Du Dongbin. Um, and um, our lineage, it, you know, teaches the Taoist five arts um, around a core of internal alchemy. So internal alchemy is the core of, of, of what this lineage is about. And by internal alchemy, I mean, uh, we have a specific definition within our lineage of what internal alchemy is and what it isn't. Um, not saying other lineages are, you know, fake or anything like that. It's just for us to, we, it's, it's nice to have kind of clear definitions within our lineage. So we know what we're doing when we're doing it. Um, and the definition is any technique, method or technique that is directly uh, forming um, the elixir, the dan, um, or a uh, sacred embryo, which is one of two things you form. Um, if it's not one of those two things, then for us, it's not nei dan um, or um, internal alchemy. Uh, and uh, so internal alchemy is really the core of, of where um, we start within this lineage. Um, and then once you've gotten some traction, in the old days, once you've mastered internal alchemy, uh, you would then go on to the five arts. Um, and the five Taoist arts are things like um, divination, medicine, all sorts of interesting practices, applications. So it's like like the, the internal alchemy is the engine that powers the car. It's what gives you the, the, the juice um, to then begin to um, apply it outwards um, in, in, in life to have certain effects, right? Whether that be medicine or, you know, fortune telling or feng shui or martial arts or various rituals. So they have all the Taoist rituals are also contained within this lineage. Um, yeah. And so Lu Dongbin is, he's really, he is pretty important because he, he, a lot of the texts that we look at within our lineage, uh, there's two main ones, the Ling Bao Bifa and the uh, Secret of the Golden Flower. Um, both of those are, are attributed to him. Um, and a lot of the texts that we look at, uh, kind of other stuff as well is attributed to him. So yeah, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of like one of the forefathers. And so we give him respect and give him his due. Um, yeah. Awesome. Very, very good description. So that's that's really nice. We know a little bit about your background. We know a little bit about Master Wang's background. Um, now, the, the it's a very interesting syllabus. Um, and you did touch on many of the elements of the syllabus, but I believe that it's the case that there are really um, two super foundational documents that you work with. One of them is the Lingbao Bifa, and the other one is um, the uh, Jinhua Zongzhi, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. And, can, you, can you introduce to us a little bit about what those documents are and why they're specifically relevant to, to your lineage of internal alchemy? Yeah, sure. I'll start with the second one. So the um, the second one is, is translated in English as the secret of the golden flower. So I'll, I'll just use that for it's easier. Um, interestingly enough, in academia, as you probably know, Robbie, that document's kind of looked down upon. It's sort of seen as sort of this mongrel script, at least 10, 15 years ago in, in, in Taoist studies, it was. Um, it was kind of like this weird you know, it's like some Buddhist stuff in there, Taoist and, and stuff. Um, but for my teacher, um, it's, it's, it's considered, it's, it, he, it's considered, it's very important. It's the, he calls it the queen of the Neidan scripts at the end of the Qing dynasty. Um, him and his teachers, because um, his teachers were born in the late 1800s, um, it was, it was pretty big deal. Uh, and one thing he does talk about is that the, the original, the one that he worked with, with his teachers had 20 chapters. And so the one that's been translated quite famously um, only has the 13. So there's some missing chapters there, which go more into um, practice and stuff. Um, and then the Ling, and so um, that text, Secret of the Golden Flower, is actually I'm going to back up a little bit. So first of all, um, the lineage is very much an oral tradition. So there's there's an oral transmission of um, methods and techniques, um, as well as energetic transmission and whatnot. The texts, um, they kind of ground it somehow. And so it, it's like 
experience is is the main thing. So we don't start by reading the text. We were talking about this earlier, weren't we? You know, the, how it, it's it's important. Um, I think with Taoist practice and Taoist cultivation and and qigong and all this stuff is the importance of of experience, putting experience first, um, and not um, not uh, um, not conceptual thinking. Uh, and so conceptual thinking that is informed by maybe reading or whatnot. I, and reading's great. I love reading. I uh, love books. Uh, but it's important. It, it can help contextualize our practice, right? But if if we use that to lead the practice, um, at least for our lineage, it, it, it can get a little strange. So for us, we always putting experience first. We try to, we apply methods or techniques uh, to get a result. Um, and the result is in data, which we accumulate to understand um, what's happening in a, in a process that we're going through. And then we can go to these other texts and find information there that can help, help contextualize the data and help understand this experience that we're going through. So, um, and these two texts are very important for our lineage. Um, and it's basically split up into the, um, the Secret of the Golden Flower is the text that's related to our Xing Gong. So in, in Taoist alchemy, there is Xing Gong and uh, Ming Gong. You have Xing and Ming, Shuang Xiu, the, the dual cultivation of Ming and Xing, right? Um, and so Ming you know, um, is our um, life force. Uh, it's, it's, it's the sum product, the sum product of, of all our past choices, either in this life and past lives that have brought us to this point in time right here. It's our, our destiny. It's the, our, our life. It's the life force that's going to carry us through, through the course of our life to our, some final point uh, when we, we, our physical body dies. Um, and so it's, it's the physical body. It's, it's all, that, all that stuff as well as the energy inside the physical body. Um, and then the Xing is, is the, the eternal, um, never changing part of us that is in gets encased in in the Ming, right? But we want to we don't we want to cultivate both. We want to work on both. Um, you know, if you don't cultivate the Xing, you, you, you might be really, you get really healthy, but you're kind of dumb. Uh, and if, if if you just cultivate the Xing, you know, you might be able to gain wisdom and, and realizations, but you're you're going to be sickly and 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 not may have the power to 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 to, um, to exist in a three dimensional uh, reality, which we all are. Uh, and 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 so we need both, and so for us the Seer of the Golden Flower it talks about working with the light of our spirit the Shen Guang, and working with that light, and bringing that light into our system, into our physical body, our other bodies, um, integrating that into our um, um, into our process of internal alchemy. And remember, when we talked about internal alchemy. There's a clear definition. So working with Shen Guang uh, and and uh, and the celestial eye opening the celestial eye working with the the upper uh, Dantian and then bringing stuff down. Um, if we're working with the Dantian, it's internal alchemy. But this practice, it's not technically internal alchemy. It's just very helpful for internal alchemy, and it's a great way of gathering the uh, the greater medicine, the external medicine, which in this context of training is the light of our spirit, uh, and be able to put it into the body. Um, and so that text deals with that. Now, the Ling Bao, the Ling Bao Bifa is internal alchemy proper. That's for us. Um, and it, it's, it's, all about, it, it's the text that helps us contextualize our internal alchemy training. Um, and so internal alchemy training, again, is working with the three Dantians, bringing them online. Um, and that helps us deal with that. Um, it also has Xing Gong training, so it's not that one's Ming and one's Xing. It, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, the Ling Bao Bifa is also, uh, is also dual cultivation, um, but it's just more focused on internal alchemy. And so with, may I talk a little bit about the curriculum as well? Um, so uh, to do our, our practice, um, we, we use the old, uh, the, the well-known, um, you know, you do foundation training first stages of the four stages of practice, which for us is five. Uh, so you have the foundation training, laying foundation, and then refining Jing into Qi, refining Qi into Shen, 
and then refining Shen. Uh, and for us, we, we go refining Shen to, uh, to emptiness and then um, refining emptiness and returning to the Tao. So there's a kind of split there. Um, I haven't gotten there yet, so I'm not really sure what that's what's going on there, but I'll let you know if I get there or you can let me know when you get there. <laughs> um, but as for those kind of the lower stages, uh, especially the first three, um, the, the, the building, the laying foundation um, part is, is actually quite extensive. There's a lot there for us. Uh, and we built, we split up into three main parts, um, the lower, middle, and upper vehicle of, of, of foundation training. And so what um, foundation training here I'm using it in more general term just to mean um because I mean I'm just working on your body preparing body and mind for Taoist alchemy. Um, however, within our lineage, we also have a specific technical term called um Zhu Ji, which is building foundation, uh, that refers to something specific, which I'll get to in a moment. So the lower vehicle of foundation training is just exercising, basically, like just getting healthy. Um you know, if, if you're, if you're, if you're sick, going, going to a doctor, like a Chinese medicine doctor or any doctor getting healthy, right. Doing herbs in the old days would be herbs, um, acupuncture, especially for older, like we're, <laughs> we're kind of moving up, moving on in life and the body begins to kind of, uh, you know, shut down. So we got to take care of that before we can do internal alchemy. You got you got you to get healthy. Uh, and so the lower vehicle is just sort of that basic stuff. Uh, and that also might mean in, um, internal uh, martial arts practice, um, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the second vehicle, the middle vehicle, is, I guess we some people would call internal practice, like an internal practice of some kind. The definition for us is any practice where we're using our inian. So we're using our, our, our awareness into the body. Once we start doing that, then um, it's the middle vehicle. So if you're just going out, if you're if you're doing Tai Chi with no um, sense of the awareness and, and working within the body, you're just moving the body, then that's great. It's good exercise, but it's lower vehicle. Once you start putting the awareness into the body and you start developing the internals, then we're middle vehicle, which is great for balancing yin and yang, building up energy. Uh, here it's post heaven energy, um, building that stuff up. Uh, good stuff. And there's also, we, there's also a kind of, for the Chinese language nerds out there, so that the lower vehicle is, is lian, to practice with the silk radical on the side. And then the middle vehicle is lian, pronounced exactly the same, but with fire radical on the side, which means to refine. So now we're starting to refine the body with the mind, um, with, the, with the awareness. Uh, and that's good. And sort of building foundation, we're, we're, we're developing. And then the third, the upper vehicle, uh, is where things start getting interesting, interesting in terms of specific to um, to our lineage. So we have a certain way of building the upper vehicle, um, and that is we use something called the Insian methods. And the Insian methods are a collection of methods and techniques, a lot of stuff uh, that are used in um, cross-legged sitting uh, sessions, are used to supplement internal alchemy. So we don't start right away with internal alchemy. We use these methods first. And they're like kind of like breathing methods, where to um, inner seeing, inner hearing, various uh, kind of techniques of Taoist cultivation, um, um, and they they are used uh, before internal alchemy to build up foundation. During internal alchemy, they're also still used. We don't we don't not use them. And then even after internal alchemy, um, like methods of bathing and cleansing, um, sitting stillness. Uh, these various various things, returning the shen um, to the body and whatnot. So we use it throughout the alchemical process as well. And so the upper vehicle starts with that. And the yin methods are broken down into three. So uh, this schematic gets a little complicated, but the upper vehicle also gets broken down to three. And the first part, the first like six or seven of the methods, there's 12 altogether, are what we call huan yuan, and they return us to um, our original state. So yuan here is, is the origins. And this is, uh, it's an interesting word. It, it comes up a lot in Tao's practice. It's, you know, kind of where we want to orient ourselves to, to return to the source that we've come from, 
we want to go back to the origin, um, to chao yuan. So chao is, in modern Chinese, it means to face. But in the old days, it was like to have an audience with a king or, a, or the emperor. You go and, you know, give obsolescence to the origin, right? So we chao yuan. Um, and so the, these first, uh, these first seven, six or seven, don't quote me on that. Um, they are, uh, they are huan yuan fa or huan yuan gong. And they are um, methods or practice to return to the origin. And I think the, the key point here is they help us tune into our pre-celestial substances. So the, the, the pre-celestial, pre-heaven, jing qi shen. So in the, say, in the middle vehicle, we're working with jing qi and shen, sure. But it might be, there's a distinction we have. There's different kinds of substances, which again is best if you, you can experience, you experience the difference. Um, and so the first, so the, so we, so Huan Yuan, and then after that, once we started being able to work with the pre-celestial, the pre-heaven substances of Jing Qi Shen, these diff different kinds of energies, um, we then do Xiu Wu Lo or Xiu Bu Lo, uh, where we seal up uh, the body. So we do a lot of a body pore breathing. We work um, with our yi nian and our shen, returning the shen to the body, sealing up, creating a, a human, we call a human universe. So creating an inside and an outside. Uh, and there's different methods and techniques for doing that. Um, we then, we also open, you know, energy channels and stuff like that. Um, and then we start going inside and working inside. Because once we have an, uh, an inside and outside set up, then we have somewhere to go inside to, to do the work, the alchemical work. And then the, the, the last couple um, of the methods in the Yinxian methods are the actual technical building foundation. So Zhu Ji Fa or Zhu Ji Gong. And the building foundation here technically just means consolidating enough substance, energetic substance in the right space to do the work. Um, that's what building foundation, the technical meaning of building foundation is. So initially we wanna build foundations so and just get healthy, um, quiet the mind, strengthen the body, open the body. Um, and start building up energy in the body for sure, um, getting the channels open, all that kind. But um, eventually, when we get to more technical part of building foundation, it's it's uh, it's that. And then from there, um, I'm just aware of the time. I can go on for hours about this stuff, so I'll, I'll try to like kind of rein myself in a little bit here. Uh, and then we go on to actual internal alchemy, which is refining jing to qi, jing to qi, and qi into shen, and all that fun stuff. And that's working with the the lower dantian, middle dantian, upper dantian, usually the lower one, uh, the lower field, um, and figuring out how to um you first we got to get energy into that into that place so we so we, we bring the energy into that lower field then it's figuring out how to use our breathing it's a combination for us like the actual techniques usually revolve around three things and that's coordination of breathing awareness and some sort of subtle physical movement we rarely ever use visualization. So we're not a lineage that, some lineages do use visualizations, that's great, but for us, we just don't. Um, we're focusing more on attention, working with the awareness and, and the shen that goes along with the, with the intention. And then and coordinating the breath with that. In the more advanced levels, we don't use breathing either. We just use awareness. Um, but in the beginning, we coordinate the breath with that, bring the energy down into that lower field, uh, and then um, transform it, qi hua, like it change that that jing energy into into qi. Figuring out first, you got to figure out what jing feels like, especially because it's pre celestial jing. Is figuring out what that actually feels like, and then being able to work with it. Um, and we also do a lot. There's also a lot of jing energy in the internal organs, so we're bringing uh, jing energy from the internal organs into that lower uh, lower field. Um, and then we're doing some canon Lee practices, a lot of other, other stuff, just kind of, it just kind of goes from there. That's the basics. You know, I'm so glad that I lost the first interview because this one is so much better. 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't get into the specifics <laughs> in the first one. It's, it was a little more. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great because now, you know, people who see this this interview, they will they will find out a lot of stuff, and that's wonderful. It's it's great for the community. And uh, now you guys know that if you like what Nathan is saying, you can point yourselves at him. Um, now, usually, I think we're going to start to wrap it up. But usually, before we wrap it up, we ask two questions. The first question is: Before where we do we... that, sorry, can yeah, I... yeah, bring it on. I realize there's something else I, I wanted to kind of leave with with the practice and the curriculum, and yeah. um, and that's the importance of um, a Wu Wei state of non doing. And I just, I really want to just drop this in here because I realize it's, it's important. And, and that is when we are in a session, we're not always doing stuff. It's really important the the, the actual, so in, in, as you know, Robbie, uh, some of you may not that, that in Chinese, um, these practices, there's yo wei and wu wei. Yo wei is, I'm not going to try and translate it, but it's basically this idea of kind of like intentionally doing something. You're like, I've got a goal and I'm going to do that and hell or high water, I'm getting there. Um, Wu Wei is more relaxing into the moment. You can still have goals, but you're following the contours of what's happening. It's more, more passive. It's active because you're, you're, you have to be present, but you're following. We need both of those in our practice. We start with methods, but in each session, it's broken down into two parts. And the first one is we do stuff. We, we get shit done. Um, and then the second part is we just go into stillness and we observe and allow whatever we've done to bear fruit. Um, and I think that really is sort of the secret sauce to our, with our lineage um, is, is learning how to bathe and cleanse like that and allow things to happen because we're not as smart as we think we are. We can't control the process. Um, this kind of chi that we're dealing with it has intelligence. It, it knows kind of what it wants to do. It knows where it wants to go. Um, it might, it, and it may, and we need to be able to just be there to allow that to happen. Um, yeah, so I just want to put put that in there as well. Good. Well, I completely agree with you. Non-action is the secret sauce. Um, so excellent. So can you tell us where this wonderful project is going in the next 10 years, just as a general estimation? <laughs> yeah, you asked me this question last time, and I sort of thought about it, and I still don't have a good answer. I have no idea. Um, I'm just kind of like, I'm just, I'm just having fun. Like, I really want to learn internal alchemy. And, you know, I went to an internal alchemy retreat with this guy. And I just kind of, it's like I'm on a train that just kind of going and I'm just follow, I'm just on the train. I haven't even really been able to kind of stop and look to see where it's going. Um, I'm hoping that in 10 years, there'll be resources for people who want to want to practice it. Um, um, you know, like I'm working on this book series and whatnot. I hope that gets out there. I hope it's useful. There's still a lot of books to write with it. So I'm writing uh, right every day. Um, yeah, I, I haven't really thought about it, you know. Um, I love this stuff. And I hope that, you know, like, I hope that people who also have a, have an affinity with it, a, you know, have yuan fen with it, right? That they ha they'll be able to find it and, and be able to have as much fun as I've had with it. Awesome. Well, your, your passion is infectious in a good way. Um, so last question is, where do people find you? Oh, um, the internet, the interwongs. Um, there is, uh, yeah, just search Nathan Brine um, on, on the old Google. I'm sure it'll, it'll point in the right direction. I have an online online course you can check out if, if interested. Um, my book series is on Amazon. That's kind of, that's kind of, I, I think I have some social media presence as well. You can check out that stuff. Um, the other thing I want to say is I'm not uh, the official successor of this lineage. I don't think there is one. I don't think he will choose one. I think he's he's splitting it up and kind of giving stuff to other people. I'm simply one dude in a web um, of other practitioners. He's very he's not a very institutional type guy. He he builds relationships just one on one with people and then just kind of if he if he wants them to do something he'll he'll tell them. Um, so in other words, there's other people out there. They're just not as I, I think I'm the most public in English. Um, but there's other people out there too. 
Awesome. So you heard it here first, everybody. Um, Nathan Bryan, uh, Internal Alchemy Luminary in Vancouver, Canada, who is also on the Interwongs. And so please look him up, uh, get his books, and find out about the excellent, wonderful Internal Alchemy system passed down from Master Wang Li Ping to Nathan, and then maybe in the future, you. So we'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, Nathan, please stick around for just a second. This has been the Dawi Expert Series, and we will see you in the next interview.